Hi guys! Welcome back to Tea on Things. I'm Rai. And in this video, let's talk about Dynamic Island. I've had this for 3 weeks now and I have some things to say about its newest UI innovation, the Dynamic Island. By the way, you can watch my simple unboxing and camera review in this video. Here! What is Dynamic Island? For me, it's basically a UI or user interface that allows users to see and interact with notifications, music, sports scores, FaceTime, and even timers. Uh, you don't even have to get out of the current outlet that you're using. You just have to lock up into the dynamic island. For me, I thought it's a clever way of taking away your attention from the notch since the iPhone 10 launched in 2017. Samsung even had ads before to mock the notch. iPhones cannot get away from the notch because it houses a lot of technologies underneath, like the True Depth camera, also the Face ID camera, and the OG proximity sensor. Making it animated in a bubble format puts the attention back into the dynamic floating notch when you were not supposed to actually pay attention to the original notch in the first place. I see what you did there. I really see what you did there, Apple. Good job though. Why am I focusing on this? Because between the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, this is the most obvious and striking difference between the two. What it will help us with. Honestly, I don't know. And for now, I rarely interact with it. Just the thought of putting my fingerprint on the camera, <laughs> on the front-facing camera, kind of makes me iffy using it. Well, for one, it sits in the place where the notch used to be, which I was conditioned by the previous iPhones to actually not mind. I rarely notice the no animation except when I used the Face ID. I also saw it when I use Spotify or YouTube Music. And you will see the album art, very very tiny album art, <laughs> into the dynamic island. I also see it when I use Waze and exit the app. But tap holding it does not show anything, though tapping it opens me back to Waze. Opening both Waze and Spotify activates the separate bubble for Spotify. At this point, you cannot interchange which app takes the bubble in the circle. Okay, the bad part of the dynamic island. What I notice now is that the status bar in the iPhone 14 Pro Max appears lower than that in the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Notice also how the lower part of the icons are aligned on the notch, while the icons are aligned in the middle with the dynamic island. Alright, the ugly part of the dynamic island is the impression that I'm getting that the screen looks smaller compared to the regular notch of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And it's actually a lot more annoying now when you zoom in to your videos or your images, especially that space between the notch and the border of the screen so you see a little bit of image. It really cuts into the experience of the display. But then again, we, we've had five years of the notch and eventually disappearing as we got used to it. Well, with that, we may also get used to the dynamic island. And since also I'm using the dark theme in my iPhone, um, I rarely get to see it unless I go full screen on my videos or my images. But it will all depend on how dynamic or intrusive it will be. And it will depend if app developers will take advantage of this additional UI. You remember that force touch that was included in the iPhone 6s? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you get to know more of the dynamic island and hopefully the app developers will really take advantage of that. In my next video, I'll go a little bit in depth on the camera of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I hope to see you in the next clip. Please take care and bye!